One of the things that people tend to get, have difficulties with when they're doing free motion quilting is that they're not even when they move the fabric. So you get, the, the worst bit is when you've got a tight curve to do and it's really tempting to kind of whip around the curve bit. So here where I'm doing these loops, people have a tendency to be nice and even on the straight bit and then as we go around this corner people kind of want to go whoop, and you, you need to keep it moving evenly whatever the shape you're doing and the other one can be when you start off on your straight bit so here where I've kind of got into this bit is as they set off you kind of do so at quite a bit of a run so you need to think right from the first bit about trying to be even on how, you, how you're pairing your movement with the foot pedal. So it's okay if you want to do a faster bit as long as at the same time you're pairing it up with increasing the foot speed. A bit like if you were you know, spinning on a spinning wheel your draft in hand has got to be in sync with the foot pedal and it's the same thing here and of course the other bit to bear in mind is it doesn't actually matter that much yes you may get that on the back you may get that slight bit that on some of the tight curves you can see the top bobbin thread kind of slightly showing where it kind of the bottom threads drawing it up a little bit it really matters much less than you think your quilt's not going to come undone and, and I, I can't envisage a point of where those loops are going to be so big they're going to you know they're not going to be toe catchers on your blanket are they so you're the only person who's going to notice them no one else is going to notice them they're not going to cause any problem with the quilt so take it as a learning curve and the more you do the better you will get and if you worry too much about those on the back, you won't do it and you won't get the practice in. So do the quilts, finish them, hang them, use them, and then move on to the next one. And every quilt you do, you will get better. I promise. I, I suppose that's something else, really. I, just think, I was just thinking about it as I was saying, um, against the analogy of spinning. And one of the problems when you're spinning is that to start off with, people are very good at doing the foot pedal and they're not very good at drafting. And what you have to learn to do, because you can't just suddenly learn to draft faster when you're spinning, it's, it's a skill and it takes time. So what you have to learn to do is to be able to do a foot pedal slowly and smoothly. So you, you work at slowing down rather than trying to speed up to match the pair you know because i'm saying you've got to do the two together and i think that's what people often do wrong on free motion is that they work out that they're not sewing fast enough for the speed that they're moving on the curve so what they do is they speed up so they sew faster and that does help in a way because you're then matching the thread you know your sewing speed to your hand movement but it doesn't help in, in the other sense in that you haven't got the control to be able to do that faster motion with your hands so what you need to do is to learn to do it slowly not to do it faster because that's like asking you to do the really hard bit even faster so you're making it even harder for yourself and then you end up with very wonky lines and things so you need to learn to slow down and that might mean that you get more gathers and um, tension problems in the back to start off with but when you've got that sorted you're in the best position because you can now go slow enough to be able to sew where you want to once you've got it sorted whereas if you only go the other way you never really get into getting the grips with the actual problem that you've got. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to slow down and try and get, and you know, my 
if you've got any ability on my foot pedal, um, the left hand side of it is slower than the right hand. Um, or the other way around, I can't remember. I know occasionally I move my foot and press the wrong side and, and it suddenly like leaps off into action. But you know, if there is a ability to kind of slow down so that you, you've really got to consciously make an effort to sew faster, um, then you could try that just to force the issue. I know some people use um, like a stitch um, modulator so that the, the sewing machine is actually going at a set speed. And if you're doing that kind of thing, set it slow and then concentrate on getting to be able to move the fabric slowly. Um, I don't use gloves. Um, obviously, you can see my hands. Um, and I, in part because I've got very small, thin fingers, so it's not easy getting gloves to fit. Um, so, because from my point of view, it doesn't give the glove might have better grip, but if my fingers sliding around it like I'm wearing a sock, it doesn't really, it doesn't really make um, better grip. But also, I just prefer to feel what I'm doing with my hands. Um, and sometimes I get my hands quite close, so I don't really want the risk of, you know, sewing myself into it. I've got a loose glove on. Um, but you can get different levels of control depending on how you're holding the fabric. So you can either, sometimes I'm like this and I've got my hands quite high and then I'm applying more force um, in a smaller area or the same force in a smaller area which increases the, the pressure on the fabric and then that helps me move it. Um, and sometimes I put my hands very flat and then I'm spreading it out over a bigger area and then sometimes that help is helpful. And it's also helpful to change between the two just because your fingers get kind of, it's hard work on your fingers, especially if you're not used to it. Um, and you might find on your shoulder. Um, so you do need to take breaks and you will build those muscles up the more you do it, but you, you won't build them up overnight. So be, be kind on your body. Um, and take breaks and set your you set yourself a reasonable time to develop the muscles that you need without hurting yourself.
and that is the background all done so that's it for this video and in the next part we're going to be doing some thread changes and we're going to um, bring these animals a little bit to life and some of the, the foliage and berries and if you remember you can buy these panels from my website um, I'll put the details in the comments if you would like to have a go at doing this one yourself